So, um, well, as I said, Ayurveda is a way of living, right? Um, yes. And to to have or to have a strong body and mind to manifest something is crucially important when you manifest something right when you're when you yourself are so sick when you yourself are so imbalanced uh, the manifestations or the thoughts that you put out in the universe are not going to be um the right thoughts or the universe is not going to be reciprocated the 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 way that you want it to be right the universe is going to help people not that you, the man, power of manifestation doesn't help in healing, but if you manifest from a point of being healthy and stable, the manifestations can be really powerful. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are in our amazing world. Venetri, who's joining us for a conversation to talk about your wonderful journey and this incredible topic that I'm really interested in, really interested in, and that's Ayurveda. So, Vanishri, your graduate was a bachelor's degree in Ayurvedic medicine and surgery um, mm -hmm. from India in the University of Health Science in India. Well, wow. and you have a wealth of knowledge and expertise in the field of Ayurveda which mm -hmm. I really want to go into more. You've been practicing Ayurveda medicine since 2013 in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. Wow. And today we're talking about empowering manifestation through using Ayurveda mm -hmm. and valuing the journey. But to start with, I'd like to know more about you. Tell us a little about who Venishri is and how you got to where you are now. Yes, absolutely. I would love to share that. Once I start rambling about me, I cannot stop. So <laughs> I'm going to do my best to keep it short and simple for you all. Who Vanashri is, obviously, I'm an Ayurvedic practitioner. But more than that, I feel I'm a very compassionate, empathetic human being. And that's why probably I do what I do. And he, I'm more than that, I'm a healer. And I love healing people on all layers of existence, which is physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual, because Ayurveda encompasses all these layers of existence that a human being exists on. And I was always, I always knew intuitively somewhere that I wanted to be a healer since I was a little kid, since I was a little child. And this also, there must have been a profound effect of what my mom did. I was always surrounded by a lot of physicians in my family, a lot of healers, a lot of alternative healers as well. My aunt is a Ayurvedic doctor. My mom is a pediatrician. So I always knew I wanted to be a healer, but didn't necessarily know what path to take. But that really called me towards it. And I'm deeply passionate about this science. <laughs> that is the science of life, right? It, the Ayurveda word itself means science of life. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And it is, it is an incredible way of life. It's not just it's not just a health thing or a diet thing. It's a whole way of life. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you you practice all different things in that. How has it helped you in your life in particular? How has Ayurveda helped me? Oh my God, yes. in every step of my life. Literally, I remember as a child. Why I tended towards practicing Ayurveda was when I was seven years old, I had a horrible uh, hepatitis A infection. My my liver was so inflamed. And even my mom, who was a pediatrician, could not figure out what was wrong with me. And like I was admitted in the hospital for two weeks, nothing like it. Obviously, like they were they kept me on IVs and a lot of different anti-inflammatory dr drugs. But Really nothing helped to reduce the inflammation. I was throwing up like crazy. I had diarrhea. I remember that's like a trauma that stuck with you when you're so little. And my mom, someone gave this information of this old Vaidya. Vaidyas are what we are called in India. That is Ayurvedic doctor. And this old Vaidya and an old heart. And my mom was like, we need to go to him because I think this is the last resort. We have to try something else. So <laughs> my mom took me to this old Ayurvedic doctor. He was in an old heart, I remember like a very dark old heart I went to his room he I sat beside beside him and he checked my pulse on both the wrists and he said 
okay, I know what is wrong with you. And he gave, he mixed some powders in front of me, like random powders and packed them in like small white paper packets and gave them to my mom and said, okay, give this for next seven to 14 days and she should be okay. And my mom was like, okay, sure. Yeah, it's going to be okay. <laughs> and then we went home and my mom obviously started those powders. I still distinctly remember the taste of it was not very palatable. <laughs> But but I was taking it because I knew this is going to make me feel better. And magically it did. So I was so intrigued by what was in those powders that really helped my symptoms so quickly and so well without causing any other side effects from it. Since then, I've always tended towards Ayurveda natural healing. Even after that, my mom started using a whole lot of Ayurvedic medicine and medicines in her practice. She used a lot of naturopathy. So I was all I used to watch her treat a lot of uh, patients, patients and that's how I was yeah that's how I was very mm -hmm. intrigued about Ayurveda but it has helped me since my childhood literally everything that I do is Ayurveda and nothing it's, else it's um, Ayurveda thank you and wow how it helped you in your childhood and stuff now I'd just like to honor you just to take a moment just to honor you on how that you're still continuing it and helping others you know, in such a natural mm -hmm. way so thank you one thing I really would like to ask you, Vanishri, because I don't hear it too much. In fact, this is the first time that I've heard Aurovada used with manifestation, empowering yes. manifestation. It doesn't yeah. usually go together. So tell us about that. How does Aurovada help you to empower manifestation? Absolutely. As I said, Ayurveda is a way of living, right? And to have or to have a strong body and mind to manifest something is crucially important when you manifest something right when you're when you yourself are so sick when you yourself are so imbalanced the manifestations or the thoughts that you put out in the universe are not going to be the right thoughts or the universe is not going to be reciprocated the way that you want it to be right the universe is going to help people not that you, the power of manifestation doesn't help in healing, but if you manifest from a point of being healthy and stable, the manifestations can be really powerful. What I do from an Ayurvedic standpoint is obviously I don't teach how to manifest, but I can give some tips on that, on how to manifest things and how mm -hmm. to put the thoughts out in the universe. But but what I usually recommend is to first take care of the vessel you're manifesting out of, right? Because yes. you are, you think of it as a charger or as a place that you are going to charge your thoughts from. If the charger doesn't have enough power to manifest the thoughts, it's not going to work, right? Um, very important thing from an Ayurvedic standpoint is fixing your gut first, to, because gut is your foundation that's the source that's the generator from where everything generates literally i'm not kidding your agni is what we call in ayurveda as your digestive fire mm. and your digestive fire is not just responsible to take care of your digestion metabolism assimilation obviously it does that but your digestive fire is so profound from an ayurvedic standpoint that it also generates your thoughts it maintains your emotions it is very deeply connected to your mind to your thermo thermogenesis in the body so a lot of things like joy laughter contentment stability all of this is governed by your digestion is governed by your digestive fire now people some people who are very pit with the people who are very analytical logical minded may say how can the gut really do this right but our mind and body mind body emotion and spirit are so deeply intertwined and so deeply interconnected that it's not even funny you i don't know how many people have experienced this if you're constipated in a row for three to four days you'll start feeling iffy in your mind too right you'll start getting irritated frustrated for smaller things yes. that don't even affect you in a routine life right or emotions might be a little more aggravated or agitated in your system is because things are not moving freely the energy is being stuck in the body somewhere and that energetic release is absolutely important so stools are not just stools are not just your 
unwanted undigested or sorry digested food it is actually a representation of things moving very regularly from your body and that just does not mean stools it also means your apana which is the type of air element that works down from your belly button and if yes. that gets stuck that air element is going to push things everywhere around in your body and push things in the wrong places where it's not supposed to go so what I usually do is I try to make this vessel really clean and healthy yes. and balanced and stable for you to experience maximum benefits from your power of manifestation, right? I And some things that I do to manifest is I know a lot of people believe there are various ways to manifest thoughts, but a lot of people would get up in the morning and then they would say one thing 100 times, say for instance, I want this, I want this, I want this, I want this, I want this. That is great. Mm -hmm. But what I truly believe is manifestation is more than saying things, doing things or writing them down. <laughs> it is great to do these things, to have a clear thought process in your mind as to what you need to manifest. But manifestation works on a very different layer or very different a uh, layer of existence, I would say. So for you to manifest, to connect to that universal energy, you need to go to the frequency of the universal energy to actually talk to it, to actually manifest, to actually say what you need, to actually put those thoughts out. So meditation has been a very big part of who I am. I have been meditating since I was 16 years old and I do a process called Sudarshan Kriya. It's a very, yes. it's called a thigh breathing. Yes, so yes. I do Sudarshan Kriya and I do that every morning I'm also an art of living teacher fortunately like my mom really pushed me into doing that and that aspect of it helps me so much being a healer to understand people and to connect to the subconscious of the person in front of me because healing is not just body it is so much beyond that is what I feel what I usually do is before I wake up, the, the time to manifest, is, the right time to manifest is when you're just getting out of your sleep, just getting out, you're not still awake, okay? You're just getting out and you're still not quite asleep, but you're still not quite awake. Mm -hmm. There is a, There are very few seconds there that you can get to manifest in the morning where your brain is not yet kick-started and your logical brain is not yet kick-started and you're still very much in the sleep but not in the sleep so that is a very good state of mind to manifest because that is the time when you're very closely connected to the universe this is a very simple tip what i do is whatever i want to manifest i just during before i wake up when i'm just about to wake up i will go to that space and i'll put that thought out in the universe that i universe i want this not want this universe i am looking forward towards this because you cannot command the universe you cannot say i want yeah. this I want no because that is never going to work <laughs> so so you can say i i would love for things to work this way i would love if i was capable of doing certain things i would love if so using positive words to emphasize on your thoughts can really help manifest manifestations also your state of mind obviously yes if you're manifesting in a fear from a point of fear it's never going to work if you're ma manifesting from a point of need it's never going to work right so you need to manifest from a very crystal clear mind thinking that you don't your mind is completely devoid of thoughts you're not you're totally in that zone that you need to manifest and only manifest think about nothing else so those are some tips that I usually tell my clients to even in the process of healing, you can manifest healing as well. I have I've had so many clients who have gotten over cancer through manifestation, gotten over like not my clients, but I've read about so many clients that, mm -hmm. that, that yeah, that have gotten over certain ailments and literally after talking to me and going through the entire process of Ayurvedic balancing, it goes so well with the power of manifestation because it's so much on the same level or so much on the same lines of working, right? Thank you for that. And it's really interesting and I totally agree. Like we we want to manifest stuff, you know, what you said, you can't command the universe. Like I want this, give it to me now. 
it's there's a process and I love how you describe it and it's how it's all connected how our mind is connected to our body how our all that thing and if there's any systems that are blocked then we're going to block the manifestation process mm -hmm. so thank you for sharing that would definitely love to get to know you to get to know more so please do come back but what I'd really like to know is tell us more about your business and do you have anything that you would like to let everyone know whether they're watching the live or the replay? Tell us about your actual business because people can connect with you anywhere. Yes, absolutely. I would love to share that. My brick and mortar practice is in Minnesota, United States, where I have my clinic, where I also provide one-on-one -on -one consults, in-depth consultations. They, are, they go for two hours. So my initial consult is for two hours. It's two hours long. I also offer these consultations virtually. Any from anywhere in the world, you can reach out to me, and I can we can certainly work together, um, via various different virtual platforms. Um, I also offer different detoxification therapies called panchakarma treatments, and those yes. therapies also work a whole lot in cleansing your body, detoxifying them, balancing it, bringing it to the natural state of balance that you were born with. And with that said, I we also recently launched uh, our own product line, Ayurvedic Herbal product line with 25 wow. different supplements. Yes. So for yes. So for various different ailments, certain adaptogens that help you in, a, in your daily routine, because these days I feel it's so such a fast paced life and people are not able to find stability. You do need the support of certain supplements, certain herbs that that can help you ground in this vibrating energy around you constant, right? Yeah, to find that safe place, that solace in something, I, I truly feel herbs can be very beneficial in that situation. So yeah, we in India, we have a USFDA approved facility where we get them manufactured from and then we import them them here uh, under our own brand name they're 100% natural um, and recently we also launched our third baby this is my me and my husband's third baby I call it it's called Ojas this is not a tea guys people are confusing it with a tea so we are working on changing the packaging a little bit but it's a herbal energy and vitality drink mix it's wow. a powder yeah, it's a powder made with six different adaptogenic herbs and the base, it, it's free of top six allergens. So it's completely vegan, nut free, soy free, dairy free, gluten free, no added sugar, caffeine free. So energy without caffeine is what we, we are targeting because I have so many clients who struggle with caffeine addiction and it's really hurting people. Caffeine is really hurting people. I always joke. I'm going to start, re not joke, I may do this sometime in my life, is start caffeine rehabilitation centers because I really feel it's so much needed. Oh, totally. Industry. I get it. Yeah. I totally understand. So, totally yeah, that understand. is one of my dreams or goals to start caffeine rehabilitation mm. centers. But yeah, but this is, the base is completely made of millet, seeds, and uh, pure dates, like dry dates is the yes. only in that and then seven amazing uh, sorry six amazing ayurvedic herbs in it uh ashwagandha you must must have heard it's very popular yes. these days um yes. ashwagandha brahmi shankapushpi shatavari a lot of some fun herbs like these that help with the stressors of the day and it's very simple you just have to take one scoop mix it in any warm milk and you're good to go so yeah the ojas is something that we are very, extremely excited about yeah, so we just got the package in our hands about three weeks ago. So we are nice. Looking forward, mm. and, yeah. looking forward to hearing. Yeah, looking forward to hearing more about it, and especially about your detox center and stuff. Definitely, and let's see how we can make that happen. Mm -hmm. So, what I'd love to know, Venetri, before we finish up, is what's your morning routine? Like, how do you keep going during the day? Yes, my morning routine is really back to back. I mean, everyone's I have two kids, two little kids. So my uh, older is seven, my younger is two. So obviously, I wake up by 630. I make them ready. And then I usually they go off to school, then I the first thing I do is drink about eight to 10 ounces of warm water with our yes. immunity drops in it, because 
these days it's wild like how much of respiratory illnesses are out there so i usually do that or i would do like a ginger lemon tea the first thing in the morning to kick start my digestive system uh, followed by that i do my sudarshan kriya that is the sky breathing then i meditate for about that that entire process takes me about 35 minutes or so after i do that then i make my lunch i just sit down for a moment oh and manifestation i totally forgot about that the first thing that starts my day i start my day with is manifestation so i would start with manifesting a thought as before even i wake up as i said in that trance state I would manifest something. I will set an. I will get up. I'll set an intention for the day. I am going to do this. I want to. I want the universe to work. I like. I would want me to work in the power of universe around me, so guiding me towards what my intention is for the day. And then I start with my routine. So I. I would come down. I'll make the kids ready. Then meditation is something that I have observed. If I do not do it in the morning, it never happens. Yeah. So that I have literally. gotten it down that I, that. I and it's a important part yes, that i absolutely yes. need to do it in the morning yes, so yes. that's my morning routine for now thank you thank you yeah. thank you for sharing that and it's amazing how much that our routines they may be only small but they make such an impact on our lives yes. so thank yes. you for that last question before we wrap is that and that would be is there any question that i could have asked and how would have you answered So you want me to tell you the question? <laughs> yes, what question could I ask? Huh, what question? Boy, there are so many, but how can Ayurveda help you in your life is one one very broad question, but I would say if you are a person who is really struggling going from doctors to doctors not finding answers to your mm-hmm. hair problems, I truly feel Ayurveda can be a solution to majority of the things. It's a science of life, so we say there are seldom very less questions that Ayurveda cannot answer. It's just sometimes you just need to figure out where how to connect the dots and to find the root cause, how to go to the root cause of why you might be having that illness or that symptom. Yeah, if you are a person running from doctors to doctors really struggling, I can really help you get back to balance using herbs and rituals. So yeah, just reach out to me and I'm here to help. I'm just a phone call away or an email away yes. and I'm for you. Mm-hmm. Yes, and we will be putting all those details in the comments very soon. And Vanishri, we really would love to have you back, really truly, because like I said, there's so many more questions. We can go into a whole thing about Ayurveda and manifesting and all the other things, just living a healthy lifestyle. Yes. So thank you ever so much. But for now, for everyone who is watching. do click on the links below when they go in the comments and if you have any questions please reach out to Vanishri and hopefully we'll have a back stop soon yes thank you so much sofia and sacred you yeah. for having me on the uh, meeting today i really appreciate what you're doing out in the world and thank you so much for creating this amazing global community not a problem thank you for joining in